Welcome to Effing Priceless episode seven. We are so pumped. Lucky because, number seven. Heck yeah. But not in crafts. So this episode, <laughs> we are talking about one of our passions, our favorite living things on the face of this planet, our pets. Definitely not people. Definitely not people. <laughs> no, our pets. Oh my goodness. Since... I was born at least. We've always had a pet in the Me house. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. The the Teddy and Bear, when I was born, they already had them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we have had a plethora of species. <laughs> yeah. This episode is, if you're a animal fan, if you love animals, this episode's for you. We're going to talk about pretty much every pet we've ever owned. Almost everyone. Almost everyone that we've ever owned. And we've had a lot of stuff. We've had... So many dogs, uh, macaws, aquariums, octopus, uh, sugar gliders. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. So this is definitely a fun episode that we're excited for. Yeah, absolutely. And believe it or not, our pets are just as crazy as us sometimes. Oh, yes. They all, I mean, as you all know, if you're pet owners, <laughs> they all have their own personalities. 100%. All their own personalities and they feed off of each other. Oh, yeah. They, they egg each, each other, other yeah, on. for sure. Absolutely. So we are so excited to share these stories with you and to share our pets with you guys. We'll put some pictures up of all of we them. We have a lot of pictures of our pets, so y'all get to a see ton. all of our uh, pets for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them combined together, even species combined. Oh yeah, a few of them. A few of them. So let's get started. So what, what dogs did you have when you were born? When I was born, uh, growing up, I had two. I had a uh, Teddy and Bear. Teddy Bear. Oh. Um, Teddy was a brown cocker spaniel, and Bear was, uh, I think he was a mutt, but he looked like a big, uh, or not a big, a medium-sized sheepdog. He was real fluffy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had Teddy. Well, Teddy was still alive when I was born. Teddy passed away when I was in high school. Yeah, so uh, Teddy was still around, but oh my gosh, sweetest dog ever. Oh, for sure. Love Bear Teddy. actually was had to be put down. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, a meter person came around to like check the meter for your water. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had the fence locked, and so they're supposed to ask you to go in the back, but mm -hmm. they, he didn't. He jumped the fence into our backyard. And Bear ran up on him and growled, so he picked up a stick and hit Bear. <gasps> and it, that this was his own account. He hit Bear, and when he hit him with the stick, uh, Bear bit him. So he reported it, and if any dog bites a human and it's reported, they have to be put down. But if they're technically, like, breaking in... Does not matter. Really? So, yeah. like, if a robber walked into our house and okay, a dog so bit him... I am not sure on that, because that's inside your property or inside the house but but even on your property uh i don't know but for we had to put him down what it was the not heck? our choice yeah well i remember um we have an aunt who used to have two chow chows oh yes oh my god beautiful dogs little blue tongue mm -hmm. not little but big blue tongues yeah super cool and one of them bit their mailman or something mm -hmm. and they had to put him down too yeah which it's sucks reported it's there's no uh, no leeway with that. Oh my god, that's absolutely awful. So when did you get the next dog? Uh, my next dog. So I had Teddy until I was. I want to say he lived like 16, 17 years. Yeah, he, he lived was a long time old. into my high school years. And when I was eleven, uh, I got my first dog. So that was like our family dog. Yeah. But then I got my first dog. My first dog. It was a, a white boxer. Um, our uncle Joe used to breed boxers. And I believe it was my 11th or 12th birthday, but he gave me uh, Sasha, I named her. I picked her out down there in the valley. And then uh, when we came back to San Antonio, we, she rode with us and then she was mine. Yeah. And boxers are fucking great dogs. Oh my God, amazing family dogs. Absolutely. Very, very good family dogs. Very loyal. Um, they are energetic and, you know, they're a larger dog. So you got to take care of those needs. But they're really, really good dogs. Highly recommend yeah. them for anybody, really. 
Yeah, her and Teddy were best friends. Oh, I remember. Yes. So, yeah, Teddy passed away when I was in high school of old age. And then it was just Sasha. And we had Sasha for a while. And one day we came home from school and someone had broke in our fucking fence. Like, broke down the slats and yeah. stole her because she was a, a valuable boxer. A white boxer. A white female, so you could breed them, make money, and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. But, yeah, someone stole her from us. Oh, my God. I remember that, too. I also remember... Actually, I don't remember Sasha, like, being a puppy. I guess I was just too young to even remember that. I got Sasha when I was, yeah, um, 11 or 12. So you were two? Yeah, I was two. But yeah. I don't even remember her as a puppy. Mm -hmm. I guess by the time I could remember, she was already probably full grown. And I, like, didn't think yeah, of her a as a puppy. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But, so, those are our, like, starter dogs. Like, getting us into dogs, I feel like. Yeah, that for sure. I mean, mom and dad always like animals, especially dogs. Um, so, yeah, that was our introduction to them. But then I think every dog after that was uh, really, really ours. I mean, they were made a yeah. bigger impact in our lives. Made a huge impact, and we took more care of them obviously like they started to become ours yes. truly not More just like the family yes. dog yeah so i remember when i was eight and actually um the dog you're about to talk about right now that was our first inside dog oh yeah growing up um sasha bear and teddy were outside dogs yeah in the backyard which was cool like but the only time you could play with them was when you went outside to the in the backyard yeah they never came inside mm -hmm. So our first inside dog we got when I was about eight, and she was a little Shih Tzu Martini. Martini. And Martini started the trend. <laughs> Every single dog after Martini, uh, we named after liquor, which you'll hear all the names you know, yep. in this uh, episode. But Martini started it all, and for Martini sure. Martini was a She's little Shih Tzu. Yep. Little Shih Tzu, OG. Um, she was a boss ass bitch. She <laughs> she was really cool. She uh, when she got older, she was a little stubborn, and she really didn't like little children because I think they would pick her up yeah. and mess with her. She didn't like being fucked with. <laughs> yeah, like any small children that come out, she would growl at them and like leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, exactly. She hated small children, which is so funny to me because I was like, yeah. Martini's amazing. Um, and with Martini, how many litters did she have? I want to say three. Three. Yeah. So uh, with a dog that we'll talk about a little later, I'm sure, or I can bring him up now, but Hennessy we got um, from some of our other dogs. Again, we'll explain it later. But him and Martini, he was a little Yorkie, had litters together. No. Why are you looking at me like that? No. Hennessy was Saki and Skies. I know. He's Hennessy... talking about Martini. I know. Hennessy and Martini had puppies together. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. They had three litters together. They had adorable Shorkies. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And we had two of them. We kept two. One of them from, like, one of her first litters, Cosmo. Oh, yes, Cosmo. Cosmo, white, like, pure, pure white. It was insane. It was so different. Um, and he got bitten by like a spider or yeah, something? Yeah, out here. So we live in Texas. We live a little bit in the hill country. We're just outside like what you would consider the city. Yeah. We're outside of 1604. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of steaks, scorpions, tarantulas out here. A lot of other stuff too. But he got We have bit. like black widows, brown recluse. Like yeah. we have deadly shit out here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he got bit by something and we were going to take him to the vet the next day. And before we even got a chance, mm -hmm. we he was acting up. a little unusual and we we're like, okay, let's watch him throughout the night, watch his uh, fluid intake and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, he passed away. So that one was really upsetting. And then one of the other litters, we got Bellini, who was one of my favorite dogs of all time. She was the cutest thing ever. Little puppy still. And my brother lost her. I didn't lose her. She <laughs> ran away. So where we live uh, in the hill country, the front yard doesn't have a fence. And all our dogs were trained to, at least the smaller inside dogs, we'd let them out the front door. They would go out into the front yard, do their business, wander around and have fun for a little bit. But then they would come back to the door. And, or they would scratch on the door when they wanted to come inside. Yeah. So Bellini would go with her mom, Martini, and they'd go outside and they would always come back. Well, one time, y'all were out of town and I let them out to go to the restroom and Bellini disappeared. She did not come back. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me too, though, if someone like picked her up 
And she was a gorgeous like, dog. She's half Shih Tzu, half Yorkie. It looks like a little teddy bear. Yeah, she looked adorable. She was still a puppy. Yes. Like, super tiny. And she didn't even have a collar yet because she was so tiny. Yeah, no, I think for sure she uh, walked to the cul-de-sac, which is right in front of our house, and someone just picked her up. Yeah, I'm sure. So, hopefully Bellini has had a nice life. Loved, yeah. Loved her. But, yeah. So, who's next? So, we had Martini. Uh, I got him. We got her in high school. And then when we moved to the next house, at the year after I graduated, um, right before that I hadn't gotten a dog because Martini was really cool and I liked her, but she was a little fluffy dog, <laughs> little, you know, princess dog. She was lazy. <laughs> and you really attached to her and so did mom. And I kind of wanted my own dog. Yeah. So mom and dad let me go to the Humane Society and pick out a dog. So I picked out the craziest looking dog I could. <laughs> um, she was adorable, but she literally looked like a dingo. She had that brown color, the same body structure, the tail. Like big she, old ears. Big, big ears. Very coarse, coarse hair. She was a uh, rough and tumble dog for sure. She was a, yeah. not, she was, thir- well, she was 29 pounds. She weighed 29 pounds her whole life. So she's a medium sized dog, but still on the smaller end. Yeah. But she was built like a tank. She really was. She was so athletic. And one of the smartest dogs, or probably the smartest dog I think we've ever had. She was brilliant. So, I mean, when she partnered up with the next dog that I got, it was <laughs> a lot of trouble. Didn't Tequila have mange when you got her? From the Maine Society. Um, when I got her, there was like some scabbing around her eyelid. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is that mange? What is that? And they're like, no, no, it's just some irritation. I was like, okay, took her home it got bigger and bigger and hair started to just fall out and she had it. So we treated her and the treatment's pretty rough on dogs. It's a, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's as rough as like chemo to a person, yeah. but sometimes it kills them. Aww. It, it's really rough. I didn't them. know that. Yeah. She got completely bald. She looked fucking Yeah. Ugly. I remember when she, she looked got disgusting. bald. She was so And ugly. then slowly her hair grew back and she made it. Yep. She made it. She was adorable. We had her for a really long time. A really long time. And the really fucked up thing about Tequila is she was killed by a deer. Yeah. Tequila was uh, was gored by a male buck here in our backyard where the woods are. And uh, it happened in a very odd way. I woke up one morning and I called her and called her and she wouldn't come in. I'd let them up when the sun came up and then I'd go back to sleep. And whenever I get up, I call them back in. Yeah. Well, we had just built a fence in our backyard. And typically when the deer would come by before the fence, the dogs would chase them and they just run off into the woods. They're mm-hmm. gone. But a deer jumped the fence to get in to probably eat some of the plants. And during rut, which is during the breeding season for, for deer, males get really aggressive. They're all hyped up. Uh, instincts are kicking in. Breed, breed, breed. Yeah. Um, fight with any other males around me. Fight with anything oh, around shit. me. Like, get away from me. Mm-hmm. That's the time of year that you'll see those videos online of... Um, bucks standing on their two legs and kicking oh yeah and trying to go after hunters or anyone around them it's during rut so tequila ran up on that deer thinking oh just like normal it's gonna run off well the deer couldn't get out so instead of running it turned and it gored her right through her body oh my god so i was fucking pissed yeah so super sad. mad i was like i'm gonna shoot every fucking deer in this area i mean i didn't <laughs> i didn't but i was pretty upset for a while oh my goodness yeah tequila was a real heartbreak to the family yeah she was a super sweet dog extremely well behaved all my friends she was their favorite yeah she was so nice literally such a cuddler too so very well behaved too she listened to whatever i told her to do yeah tequila is really badass so then then she got a partner (laughs) yeah then came stoli bear so the way i convinced my parents to get me uh, to allow me to get stoli was I said when I got tequila from the main society that I wanted a big dog mm-hmm. and in the main society when they have the tags of what the you know the dog how old and all this is estimations by the way it's right. estimating how old this dog is estimating what breeds it's mixed with mm-hmm. well on there it's a German Shepherd mix so when I got tequila I thought she was gonna be a big dog oh, well yeah, obviously yeah. she did not grow to a big dog no you know? a but or a, a pound under 30 pounds 29 pounds and so when she got a year a year and a half i convinced mom dad i was like well i wanted a big dog and they're like what do you mean you got your own dog she's gonna make well i want a big one so i nagged at them for a while and i didn't think that was going anywhere and then i'll never forget it was senior year mother's day mother's day yeah. mother's day 
I'm of course a senior in high school, hungover as fuck on Sunday morning. <laughs> Uh, mom walks into the room and she's like, hey, do you want to go to church with us? I was like, no, no, leave me alone. I'm like, nope. Yeah. No church for me. I'll throw up. Uh, so they leave and I go back to sleep. And then whatever, a couple hours later, I get woken up and it's mom. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, we're going to do like a Mother's Day breakfast and presents and stuff like that. No, she has a puppy and she just hands me a puppy. And it's this beautiful, it looked like a black lab. He was part pit bull and half, uh, half pit bull, half black lab. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little black puppy. And that's how I got stolen. He was so adorable. I remember she walked into my room first before she even went to yours. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And I was like, you got me a bunny? And she was like, it's a puppy. I was like, even better. Yeah. Stoli was amazing and... Oh, man, a terror at the same time. A terror. He was a little... He was so mischievous, first of all. Big and time. he was an escape artist. He was the Harry Houdini of dogs. Yeah. No doubt. And people don't believe me. And then when friends would watch our dogs or um, be staying over and hanging out, they would see him do stuff. And they're like, I cannot believe what that fucking dog does. I know. So the thing about Stoli was he grew up learning from tequila, which was the smartest dog I've ever owned. Yeah. And she listened well. You could see her figuring things out. Uh, like one example of her intelligence is at one point in the property, but before we built a fence, we had um, uh, range collars, uh, electronic collars for the dogs. So when they go to the, bound, the, the border around it and try to cross it, it would send off a ping alert and beep, and then it would give them a mild shock. Mm -hmm. Well, she was so adamant to go run around the property outside that barrier that she would walk around the entire fence area and walk up to it and wait for it to beep and then step back. She would move 10 feet further and do it, systematically checking for a weak point <laughs> in the fence. That's how smart Tequila was. So Stoli learned from Tequila. Yeah. So Tequila, they would pair up and Tequila would tell Stoli what to do. And Stoli would go and carry it out because he was the muscle. He was the Tequila's bigger 29 one. pounds. Yeah. Stoli was like easily 100. 100, 105, 110 pounds. He was mm -hmm. kind of chunky at the end. He was chunkers. But Pitbull Lab, he's a big dog. Oh, for sure. And so uh, the things he did blew my mind. So at first, um, I would leave the house. And when I would leave the house, if the dogs were not outside, I would leave them inside my room. I'd come back, and they would be all inside the house, everywhere. Well, Stoli learned how to open every single door in our house. So we have, like, handle doorknobs, not like a turn doorknob. Like door levers. Yeah, door levers. Yes, not the doorknobs. Exactly. Every single door in our house has a lever. And so you could just reach up and punch it or pull it down and open every fucking door. I literally remember. <laughs> I remember coming home the first time that he ever did this. And the dogs were all upstairs. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I come downstairs and literally every single door is open the garage the door to the garage the media room the like closet bathroom every single yeah. door wide open it looked like someone had just come in our house yeah and try to rob the place and or, like, look like, for something what the heck is going on but then the back door is closed he couldn't get that one open because it was locked yeah yeah and i was like oh my goodness this that's actually why i installed a lock on my bathroom and my door to my bedroom because he would open it you i had to put a lock it. on it yeah and wh what else would he open? So <laughs> we thought that was bad enough. Like, okay, this dog's fucking opening doors, going wherever the fuck he wants, doing whatever the hell he wants. Well, after that, um, outside my bedroom, I have two windows that lead to our patio. And <laughs> I found my dogs outside a few times, and I didn't understand how they had gotten outside until I saw the window. Turns out, at first I didn't believe this until we saw him do it. <laughs> Stoli would go to the window and I guess from watching us open it and close it so many times he would move the lever the top lock yeah. to unlock the window put his nose underneath the windowsill like where the, the, the lip is yeah. and push as hard as he could and then he would lift it and lift it and he would open the door or open the window all the way up <laughs> pushing it you know little by little and then once he did he just slammed through it <laughs> like the Kool-Aid man right through the screen and jumped out the window into the backyard. And then that and then proceeded to let all the other dogs out. Scotch would go with it. Yeah. So they're just everywhere they want. So I had to like 
instead of just locking your window, I had to get a piece of wood, like cut a broomstick to put it above to wedge it so yeah, the window would it. not open. He would do shit like that <laughs> on the regular. So then I remember we were, I don't think we had a fence yet or we only had a fenced off part of the backyard. And we had to build our house up. We're on like a very steep slope. And so our pool is, if you walk around our pool, it's what, like six feet? Yeah, the drop. The drop mm -hmm. is like six feet. And so we had to put like a wall behind the grill that's on like the little deck patio under there. And then we had the fence going like to the right of the pool. Well, we'd come out and like see Stoli on the driveway or something. And I'm like, how did he get out? And continuously, I would tell you, like, Stoli was out of the fence. And so he went, looked around the fence, and was like, there's no way he got out from the fence. And then I was like, I think he's jumping. Yeah, and it's like a six pool. foot drop. Yeah. It's a huge drop. And then he did not believe me. And he was like, go watch him. So one day I was sitting on the patio, just, you know, observing Stoli. And sure enough, he walked up to like behind the grill and straight up jumped on top of the fence of the wood piece that we had put behind the grill and just jumped fucking risk it all jumped yeah. and i was like oh and there were bushes down there God. but i mean he's a heavy dog he's gonna jump and crash through those bushes and then land i literally cannot believe it it was unreal but he was a hella smart dog escape artist big time well the max. Uh, do you remember his other problem no super afraid oh. of lightning yes no i'm sorry not lightning thunder, thunder. Or fireworks anytime around Fourth of July or just New Year's. loud noises. I feel like it was specifically those. Oh, okay. Nothing else really bothered him. Yeah. But uh, the problem with him is, <laughs> if I was out and it starts storming at home, I had to haul ass home to try to prevent what he was about to do. <laughs> so you already know he opens all the doors. In my room, there's a door to where my sink area is, a door to where my shower is. And then another door that goes to my closet. So that's three doors yeah. to get to my closet. I would come home and they're all fucking open. <laughs> and then half of my clothes have been ripped down. And he made like a giant pile and was hiding under the pile because he was so afraid of the thunder. Oh my God. Well then, I think before he learned how to do that, he would just hide in the bathtub. He would hide in the bathtub. And one time I came home and my room was flooded because he hid in the bathtub and he turned on the fucking tub. Yeah. And it's just flowing and overflowing and overflowing <laughs> and everything is flooded. <laughs> yeah. He did that too. He also, so I wanted to prevent him to get getting into my closet to doing that again. Mm -hmm. So I put a lock on it. Yeah. It stormed one night and I didn't get home fast enough. My uh, closet door was ripped off the hinges and laying in my closet. <laughs> he had literally ripped it, the screws, out of the frame to get in the closet to hide from the storm. Oh, like a hundred pound pit bull lab broke through that door. Unreal. That dog is just unreal. Well, he also ate through the wall in the fish room. Did he really? There's a giant hole still there. <laughs> so in our so behind the bar here, if you're watching on YouTube. Behind that bar, behind that tapestry, is a big, big aquarium that's in progress. It'll be awesome when I get it going. It, we used to have it set up at our other house in here before, before I took a, a little break from aquariums. But that's in the garage, and in the garage we built a false wall, which is just, uh, you know, frames or, you know, yeah. studs, and then it's just uh, plywood. Not plywood, I'm sorry, drywall. Drywall. The drywall is pretty weak. Well, one of the times it was storming, I was like, let me put them in the garage, and it'll be safe for them there. <laughs> And he literally chewed or just busted through to get into the aquarium room to be in a more confined, quiet space. I came home, we couldn't find him, and then there's a giant hole in the wall. <laughs> he probably just busted through there. Again, Kool-Aid manned it. And yeah. And just, oh my God. A giant hole in the wall. So that was Stoli. Stoli would do amazing things. People wouldn't believe me. And then most of the time it was either friends that were over or people watching our dogs when we were out of town. And they would tell us some crazy shit and be like, how the fuck does he do that? I'm like, yeah. I don't know, but it's annoying as shit because he does whatever he wants. <laughs> it's really, it was so annoying, but honestly, it was so impressive. Oh, like, yeah. I gave it to that dog. And even if Tequila was the mastermind behind it all, like, Stoli was the executioner. <laughs> he, oh, yeah, he got it done. He got it done. He was badass. 
Oh my goodness. Wonderful memories. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, Stoli was a really great. Actually, uh, it was unfortunate I lost him to, he had an autoimmune disorder. Yeah. One day he got really sick. I took him to the vet. We did a, a couple blood transfusions, but it, it was more of a, a time, like a Band-Aid thing. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the cure and he passed away. Yeah, but, uh, it happens. Super sad. It happens, and unfortunately, with us, we're so attached to our dogs. They, yeah. they're our family. Every single dog that's passed away, and any of our animals, it, it really hits hard. Yeah. It does. But yeah, so who else we got? So after that, let's see. I bought one of my ex girlfriends a Yorkie that I had for a long time. That he was amazing. He's his son. Uh, is the one that bred with our other one, Martini. Yeah. So with that one, I had Saki, Sky, and Hennessy, all Yorkies. Yep. So it was Saki and Sky who had puppies, and then we kept Hennessy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're really good. I, I have a picture of Saki, and he he was literally the best looking dog I've ever had. When he got his haircut, he looked like he should be in magazines. Yeah, he we'll was put a picture adorable. on here. He's in his uh, little rubber ducky bathrobe. <laughs> I mean, he was a stud. He was a good-looking dog. He really was. He was beautiful. And then Sky was a silky. Yeah, silky terrier. Yeah, but oh my gosh, just really good-looking dogs. Honestly, Kalua. Sorry, if you hear that coughing, it's our our other one of our other puppies, Kalua, our Italian mastiff. <laughs> She's got some fun stories too. Okay, so let's talk about my not so favorite dog. <laughs> You're talking about Scotch. Yes. So Scotch. So here's the thing. I love all dogs, and in my pack, because I'm always gonna have a few dogs. No matter at what point in my life, I want a few dogs. Yeah. I want a small and a large. I want. And an extra, extra large. <laughs> well, now I have two XL dogs. Yes. But I want big and small. I'm not biased. I I'm not just towards one. Yeah. And um, so Scotch is my little guy. He's my little fluff ball. He's about nine right now. And he is showing no signs of calming down <laughs> or slowing down. He is still as hyper as he, when he was one year old. Yeah. No, he is honestly a beautiful dog. Oh, he's a real good looking dog. A stud muffin. Just your picture perfect Pomeranian. Yeah, he's adorable. Literally. He really is. But he is a demon dog. He's and not I will a demon say this, dog. I will say this time and time again. So, one, he just doesn't fucking listen to anybody. He listens to me. Sometimes. Most of the time. Most of the time. And I, I don't even know what to say about this dog. He, <laughs> I literally call him Demon Dog so much. But I love him right now because him and Mimosa play together. Yeah. Which is awesome, and Scotch finally has a friend to play with because Kalua and Uzo, the, yeah. the extra large dogs, play together, and then they don't let Scotch join in. Scotch weighs 12 pounds, Kalua is 130, Uzo is 160, 170, and growing. He's still a puppy. <laughs> yeah, he, he gets yeah. really frustrated when the big dogs play, and he growls at them because he's so he's mad that he can't play. Yeah, he barks a lot, and not only does he bark and whine, he makes these demon noises. This is why I call him Demon Dog. He literally will be sitting in the corner doing who knows what, and you just hear. He makes some peculiar, <laughs> peculiar grumbles. <laughs> That's for sure. And I'm like, what the heck is he doing? What's going on? And I was like, it's the demon trying to escape. A lot of a lot of smaller dogs, small breeds. Um, sometimes have breathing problems they do 100 percent. martini did mm -hmm. big time but martini snorted constantly yes. and she snored so loud so he doesn't do that but that's what he does he has sometimes he's like it's like he's so he trying to demon noises? it sounds like he's trying to clear his throat but it lasts for like 30 seconds a minute sometimes <laughs> and every, so i just let him do his own thing and then he's fine after a while and she always says when he does it in the room she's like he's trying to exercise the demon out of him the <laughs> demons try to come out of him well because then it's not like a normal dog clearing their throat like coughing you know no it's a yeah it sounds like <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it literally sounds like a demon is trying to crawl out of his 12 pound body <laughs> it does sound really funny and it's, it's really funny to me when she watches my dog for me because i can hear her on the phone yelling at him to do something and he's growling back at her like fuck you i'm not doing that you're not my dad i don't have to listen to you literally if i yell at scotch like with Mimosa, for example, hardly ever do I have to yell at her. I just tell her to do something. Like, the commands that she does know, and she'll do them. But with Scotch, I'm literally screaming at the top of my lungs. Like, yeah. 
Because he won't listen. He and didn't then, listen to my ex-girlfriend either. <laughs> yeah. And then finally he'll listen. Like now whenever I tell him to get off furniture or like, Scotch, shut the fuck up, then he'll yeah. do it. But it took a while for us to get there. So Scotch has a lot of personality. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a uh, he's little dog syndrome for sure. Yes, definitely. We'll go outside. We have a table um, in the backyard, like on the patio. And sometimes I'll just like walk by and he's standing on the table, like growling and barking at the big dogs. Yeah, because at that height, he's like, oh, I have a little bit of advantage on them. <laughs> he's like, I'm king of the world up here. <clears throat> he's so funny. He's grown on me a little bit, not going to lie. Only because he's him and most are friends yeah. now. See, it would be perfect that he had one his size. Yeah. I wanted to get a female Pomeranian, but I never found one. Oh, yeah. If you have a female Pomeranian. Oh, wait, we fixed Doesn't him. Matter. He's fixed. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So after that, I had probably one of my all time favorite dogs that I've had my entire life. It's Kalua. Kalua is an Italian Mastiff, otherwise known as a uh, Connie Corso. And Mastiffs, as you know, or heard, seen, I don't know if you've ever had one. They're big fucking dogs. <laughs> big, big dogs. Uh, for Mastiffs, the Italians are the most athletic out of all the Mastiffs. So they're not like giant lumbering, you know. She runs. She's hyper. She's yeah. strong. She's quick. And she's very athletic. Uh, she's about four years old now, and she still doesn't have one little fat fold on her. She no. is lean yeah, and strong. Yeah, super lean. And another thing, I remember when you got her... Um, oh, tell them how you got her. So I got her from, if you've listened to our other episodes, uh, my really, really good friend, best friend, uh, Luke. His family had two of them, and they bred them one time. And out of that litter, I got her. And it's really funny because they're amazing people, and they've always had dogs, big dogs. They used to have Great Danes when we were growing up. Then they switched to the Italian Mastiffs. Well, they got an awesome male, an awesome female. They bred them one time. They, uh, because pretty much, it's really hard on their bodies. Yes, it is. Every time you breed a dog, it's, uh, it, it's a life force. So every time, all that energy it takes to create and grow puppies inside of you, it takes years, or not years, it takes time off their uh, lifespan. Oh, okay. It really does. Yeah. The more litters, they're not going to live long. It takes it out of you. Right. Um, so they sold them to like really close family and friends. And so they had the, the mom, the dad, and then they kept a boy and a girl mm -hmm. uh, so I had my pick of the litter I got Kahlua and it was about a year and my buddy Luke was like come bring her back uh, to come play with ours yeah. so they have a lot of land and in their backyard they have this awesome creek that goes by I take Kahlua back there and one by one she meets them because they are for family I mean they're not just a pack they're family right. mom dad you know son daughter yeah big fucking mastiffs I mean, of course, she is too, but she hasn't seen them since. I was going to say, it's probably overwhelming for a dog to walk in, and there's so many of other course. dogs. Of course, and it, if they don't immediately recognize this is family, which dogs can do, even after a long, long time. They, really? Yes, they can. Um, That's pretty It's cool. still a little intimidating. Yeah. So she was nervous at first, but then she played with them, and uh, we'll throw some pictures up on that one too, but it looks fucking cool when you have five mastiffs running around. Yeah, I bet. They're playing and wrestling. Huge. I mean, they're big burly strong dogs and wouldn't they like jump in the creek and stuff they have a creek that runs through their backyard and she had never been swimming before while well, all his dogs just run through the the creek yeah. and then swim across it it was like 10 feet wide not a big one right and she would do it too and i was really surprised she just wherever they went she was following kalu is awesome now she'll like go in our pool and like splash oh, yeah. around and stuff now she loves the water and kalua is I don't know what's up with her, but she is obsessed with toys. Like she just wants to play no, all the time. Not like a normal dog, though. Yeah. Like I think she has a a thing, like an anxiety thing or something, that she always needs to have a toy in her mouth. No, it's because she wants you to throw it and play fetch. She wants to play and wrestle. With okay, you. that's not true because <laughs> she'll bring me a toy when I try to grab it. She'll just put her head under my hand because she wants to be pet. No, when they bring you a toy and they don't give it to you, um, that's actually them challenging you. That's psychological. What? They think it's funny when they really do. They think it's, they get a kick out of it to bring you something and have you reach for it and then them say no. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That's why you, you shouldn't repeat that action with a dog when you're trying to teach them to fetch and leave yeah. it. Yeah. That, that's teaching them, the more I pull it, the more they play with me. They're mine. Right. You know? 
Oh my goodness, no, I thought it was just because Kahlua like needed attention and wanted to be pet. Because she'd literally put her head underneath my hand and I'd be like, okay, I guess. She does it all the time. She'll bring it up to someone and then as soon as they go for it, they're like, can I play fetch with her? I was like, yeah, but she's not going to give it to you. Yeah. And then they try and try and she like, she's like laughing. She like runs her away <laughs> and comes back. She's like, here, no, no. Oh my gosh. And not only that, if you, I've seen like other dogs do this, but it's really funny because Kahlua is 130 pounds. But if you stop petting her, she does the little paw thing oh, and, and, head, and head butts you to pet her some more. Yeah. And it's different if it's Mimosa different does, does it. Yeah. <laughs> but if Kahlua does it, oh my goodness. But she's a great dog. Absolutely phenomenal. You've seen her run ar around in our past episodes also. Yes. But now Kahlua has a friend. So at that point I had um, Scotch, Kahlua, and then my ex-girlfriend had a big dog and they she loved Kahlua they mm -hmm. got along really well well when we broke up obviously her dog went with her so Kahlua was left alone so I had an idea before that there was a problem with my ex-girlfriend's large dog uh, she was older and she had really bad hip problems yeah so they couldn't really wrestle Kahlua wanted to play hard with her and that poor dog just couldn't do it uh, it was too much on her so she would whine and cry so I got it in my head and I got this idea I want a big dog a big dog. A big dog. dog. So Kalu's already 130 pounds. Yeah. Big Mastiff. I wanted a bigger dog, and I want something big and fun so Kalu can have a best friend while she's a puppy still, you know, young. Yeah, And absolutely. grow through it with having a dog her size. Yeah. So I had my heart set on a big-ass dog. And by, by fate, I want to say, uh, I would check Craigslist and different pet sites and forums very frequently, like almost every day for dogs. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened on my 30th birthday, I wake up and I check some ads and there is a St. Bernard Great Pyrenees puppy mix. So St. Bernard is one of the largest and heaviest dogs <laughs> and Great Pyrenees, they're top 10. They're big dogs. Yeah. And I went and checked them out and I bought them for myself on my birthday. Best <laughs> birthday present I've ever fucking given myself. So when my brother got Uzo, um, now he's 160 pounds, absolutely massive um but when he got uzo he was a little puppy about honestly probably even smaller than mimosa is now oh yes but he was heavier than mimosa is now he was a dense dog yes he was super he dense is. and it's like you could tell by his paws and everything like this is gonna be a big pupper he's gonna be a big boy the first year he grew and grew and then he was about the same size as Kahlua. And mm -hmm. I was like, aw. I thought, I mean, St. Bernard and Great Pyrenees. Yeah. The Great Pyrenees and the uh, the Mastiffs are about the same, but not the St. Bernards. Those are dogs that can, on the regular, get 200 pounds. Yeah, easily. So I thought, you know, having that in him, he's going to get much bigger. He stayed the same size as Kahlua. And I was like, okay, you know, that's cool. And about right as he hit a year old, the next few months, he put on fucking weight, size. Yeah. He got two three inches taller about six inches longer and then he got real fucking big and he i haven't weighed him because because of our surgery um i can't lift anything really heavy until yeah. everything's really healed i have a lot of restrictions so i can't physically lift him <laughs> i can't get him to a scale yeah like a pet scale the ones that you can walk on to weigh him but he right now easily 160 165 easily he's so, fucking huge yeah so not only can we not weigh him at home we can't even like take him to a pet smart to get weighed he won't get in a car because he won't get in a car, he won't get in a car. <laughs> it's really difficult to get him a car he he dead weights you he does not want to leave our property which anytime, is weird yeah anytime the doors open to the garage and out to the outside yeah. he just stares at it the other <laughs> dogs will take off running i call him back and they come back yeah he just stares at it. he's like nope mm -mm. that's so he's like what is it called agoraphobia yeah. When you don't want to be like outside or yeah. like not in your own situation. Oh my goodness. But so now that Uzo and Kalua, uh, Uzo's a year and a half, Kalua's uh, about to be four this year. I mean, they are best friends. Oh my goodness. Two giant dogs that wrestle hard. Absolutely. I sweep my room every fucking day <laughs> because in the backyard we have a sand volleyball court and they wrestle in it every morning for hours and come in and drag in so much sand. <laughs> But they're it's, huge. No, so I remember I would walk into your room sometimes, and I'd literally slip if I was wearing yes. shoes because of how much sand there was. 
It's so funny though. But now you just like vacuum your room every day. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> I mean, it's a part of it having big dogs like that. I mean, it's like the dog hair. Yeah. You gotta be used to it. Uh, for those of you not watching on YouTube, I have a shirt. It's one of my favorite shirts on right now. It says, it's, uh, what does it say? It's not dog hair. It's canine confetti. There you go. If you have dogs, you gotta be used to it. Yeah. Either that, and you, you gotta stay on top of cleaning. Definitely. Furniture, for sure. And Sweeping, Uzo, knocking. I mean, Uzo shed so much. Just He's because- same for He's got long, long, big fluffy he's already a fucking huge dog yeah. and then having him furry exactly but i remember uh, i don't think anyone has shed as bad as tequila did though tequila was a bad shedder. oh yes definitely because she had that dual coat yeah mm-hmm. but oh my goodness and then tell him about uh uzo's toes so <laughs> when i first got <laughs> uzo um in most dogs they removed the dew claw which is like that other little digit other little thumb toe whatever you want to call it yeah that hangs off the other side the back end of the claw of their foot mm-hmm. so it's facing the opposite way of all their other toes well then if you go up just a few more inches there's like uh, another one up there <laughs> and he has two more up there yeah and you know i, I already kind of knew about it but i didn't know specifically for uh, saint bernard's um, so I just saw it and, you know, let it go. Well, one day you noticed it and you're like, I think he has like a <laughs> nubbin or like there's something wrong with your dog. He, there's like like a piece of him hanging off. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's like, look. Well, certain XL mountain dogs, dogs that are meant to trek through um, really, really deep snow or dig in snow for rescues. Um, they, you know, it's been a part of their breeding yeah. to get another dew claw that helps them when they dig. Oh my god! And so I that's what it's for. I was like, your dog has like seven toes. You need to fix that. <laughs> no, yeah. And it looks really weird, but when you see them, because it's a, it's a, another big toe and then a claw. Yeah. I'm like the fuck is that? I know it looks really weird. Yeah. But... Uh, Saint Bernards have them. Uh, Newfoundlands have them. Uh, I think Burmese Mound Dogs might have them. Maybe. Or Swiss Mound Dogs. But yeah, some of the XL dogs, they have that feature and it's just different and you're like, the hell is that? Yeah, so if you get a mountain dog, do not be alarmed. Extra toes. <laughs> it's supposed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we're on to my little nug, Mimosa. So I got Mimosa as a graduation gift and she is half Maltese, half Shih Tzu. I wanted a Shih Tzu for my graduation gift. And we looked day in and day out for dogs everywhere, yeah. like both my brother and I. And it just so happened, I remember distinctly, actually, we were at like a that weird DVD video store. Oh, where you buy old ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I found her on Craigslist, like the litter on Craigslist, and I texted them right then and there. And they were like, we just posted this ad like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I was like, I know. Can I see that? <laughs> they were good people too. And really, really pretty dogs. Yeah, and we went well right taken over care there. Of. Absolutely. That's a big thing we do. When we always go look for dogs, I mean, every time we've wa- – well, for the exception of like Kahlua, I think. Um, every time I've wanted a dog, I went to multiple people. Okay, check them out, talk to them, see their dogs, see how they're treated, how, you know, in what capacity is that dog a pet to them? Exactly. And then, no, I don't want a dog from here. No, I don't want, you know, no, I don't like this vibe. I don't like how they treat their dogs. So we, I don't think so. I don't think we've ever bought a dog from a breeder. Scotch. Oh, I Scotch, Scotch and did? Saki. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Pure from breeds, breeders? Papered, yeah. Yeah. So, but other than that, I know when we were even looking for our first dog from Martini, mm-hmm. Um, we went to so many places, and a lot of them were like puppy mills. They're like the puppy dogs. Mills. They're these people that they just buy a whole bunch of dogs, and they just breed them recklessly over and over, which is yeah. super, super stressful and bad for the dog. And uh, sometimes, like in breeding, just they don't care. They just do it just so the puppy has, or so the dog has puppies, and then to turn around and sell them. They yeah. don't give a fuck about the dogs. And they literally, I remember this one distinctly, that they kept them outside in, like, one of those rabbit cages, you yeah, know, that the was, wired, like, yeah, yeah. the wired ones. And I was like, this is where you're keeping your dogs, like, outside and not, like, with their mom or anything. I don't know. I, It just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. And so ever since then, or for me at least, whenever I was searching for a dog... I was like, well, I don't really want to go to a breeder 
like I would hope to find a dog that like we did whenever Martini and Hennessy had puppies. Yeah, it's like yeah, you like, want more family. You're not you don't want them breeding purposely with a website for money. Exactly. Which there's nothing, you know, I, I don't have anything against that as long as you maintain the correct bloodline and don't um, put your dogs in a bad situation. You got to take care of them. Like they're your right. pets first. They're not for money. They're a part of your family first. Exactly. And so for me, I wanted someone that I was comfortable with and like also wanted to meet the dogs, wanted to meet the parents. That was a huge yes. thing for me mm -hmm. also. Um, and so whenever I found these people, they were so happy to like invite us to their home and be like, yeah, we have how many, oh my gosh, how many yeah. dogs? Seven? Oh, quite a few, yeah. Maybe seven or eight. And we like walked right in and they had them in their little kitty swimming pool, mm -hmm. which is so common. We did that too. And oh my god, they were just the cutest little nugs. They were I've they looked ever like seen. little Ewoks, like little, little teddy, bear. teddy bears. They're hilarious. Yes. Like and they had the mom, the dad there too. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got Mimosa. And um, Mimosa lives with me in New York, so she flies with me all the time. And she's awesome. She's honestly just a good hearted dog in my opinion. She's always happy. She just loves life. And I don't believe in giving my dog treats that is just something i like don't do really i don't either none and of my dogs so um like no, no, no. okay wait when we when we say treats we're saying um things that are not specifically made for dogs and that are healthy for them so like even those whatever uh milk bones you buy yeah those aren't good for dogs exactly they're like eating uh, junk food yeah so i like even training treats like i never did that either um if anything what i did was literally get a piece of her food like yeah. i didn't believe in giving her something different than what she was eating um also because little dogs like that they're like prone to obesity and i was like yes no thank you <laughs> yes definitely but you gotta stay in shape no literally with most dogs if you just grab a handful of their food and walk away from the bowl and then start giving them to them as treats they, they, it's, they treats. Still, it's still food it's a food reward to them yeah exactly and mimosa fun fact about mimosa i've given her peanut butter before she's had broccoli like, broccoli and carrots are really good for dogs and green beans yes so i've done that for her um but funny thing about mimosa like i said i don't uh, like normally give her treats or anything but she loves ice cubes so those are her treats she She'll, really does think they're like special yes she thinks they're so special if she hears the refrigerator like er start going on with the ice cubes she runs to it that's why i am so thankful that uzo and kalua haven't got into that they're big enough they could just push the, the <laughs> fridge and empty it out on the floor they really could it's hilarious i mean in my apartment in new york i don't have that i use like ice trays i don't have a refrigerator one but she knows as soon as i open that freezer she's like it's fair game where's yeah. my ice cube <laughs> yeah can you imagine if one of them liked it oh my god that'd be hilarious but yeah so mimosa fun fact um she ate some things of mine <laughs> oh my god this dog <laughs> so it started <sighs> off with little things the remote anything i leave around shoes you know things valuable shit and then it got to very fucking valuable shit <laughs> one day i was getting ready to travel i think i was flying home flying somewhere i don't know and i was starting to like get my things and put them on my coffee table so <laughs> i put my passport on the coffee table i come back from work that night my passport is unreadable <laughs> it is in shreds mm -hmm. fucking pieces everywhere and i was like <gasps> fuck i have to tell mom <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I was so scared and so mad. Yes. I was furious. But then, honestly, from then on, I knew, like, I have to keep my apartment clean. Like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you say that, but... Okay, well, then something happened. Um, oh, wires. That was another one of her things, too. Which is really dangerous, too. Dangerous. She wires, yeah. But she did it, and I guess she never got shocked. I don't know. Or maybe she did, and she and liked maybe, it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's why she's like this. <laughs> A little special my brother thinks she's special because she's clumsy but anyways so then um the day before i was flying home 
uh, for the surgery. For the surgery, for our transplant for surgery. For our transplant surgery, the day before, the three days prior, I had the worst migraine that I've ever had in my entire life. The worst. And I went to work the day before I was flying um, because I thought it was gone. And I got stressed out at work. Something happened and literally full blown migraine all over again. And I was like, oh, fuck, like shit. So I get home and I just put my things down on the table because I was like, I like I can't move. I can't function. I don't even know what to do. Mm-hmm. Literally just threw my things down and went to my bed. And I don't know, two hours later, maybe I hear like chomp, 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 crisp, crisp, crisp. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I take off my like frozen eye mask and I'm like, what is happening? And Mimosa is sitting there chewing on my driver's license. See, bad dog. Bad dog. And I lost it. I was like, oh my God, I have a, such a bad migraine. I can't even think right now. What do I do? Well, turns out she only chewed on the corner of my driver's license, which did not in that corner it did not include my driver's license number my picture or my name or birthday you got so lucky right there so lucky and so literally i <laughs> Scully was like that he chewed up a lot of shit everything he was a puppy. yeah i mean labs labs are bred to hold yeah. something in their mouth it's just instinctual and some dogs some dogs chew way more than others yeah i mean uzo would chew on things too Okay, Uzo is a little bit different because of his size, though. <laughs> uh, Uzo, I spanked him one time because he uh, chew- was chewing on the aquarium stand, and then he never did it again. Yeah. But in our backyard, I have a, a pile of uh, firewood, you know, <laughs> literally chainsaw trees for firewood, and he thinks they're his own personal chew toys. Yeah. He walks. You walk into the backyard, and by the pool, there's like five fire logs just thrown out and like half eaten. And he just chews them like nothing. Yeah, Mimosa goes outside and grabs like a stick literally four or five inches long and is so proud and happy. And then I see Uzo carrying a log. A, a big <laughs> ass log. They're, they're big and they're heavy and they're so heavy that when I'm inside my room, sometimes I think it's thundering outside or I hear something and I have to go outside and I'm concerned. It's him just literally dropping it out of his mouth onto <laughs> the cement, onto the patio. And you, it's so loud. Yeah, we've the other heard day, it. Yes. I was like, the hell is that noise? And I went out there and I watched him do it. I was like, holy shit, he's just dropping the logs. Yeah, we heard it so many times to the point where we were like concerned that something was going on. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, never mind. It's just the dogs fucking dropping their <laughs> fire away yeah. on the patio. But yeah, let's see. You want to talk about the cats real quick? Yeah, we can do cats. I mean, we wanted to keep, we wanted to fit all of our pets into this episode, but this has just been dogs. This is just been dogs. And when we get into the aquarium side, where we've had an octopus, shark, That's eel, be a stingrays, whole other lionfish, <laughs> beautiful corals, anemones, everything you can talk about or think about. Trust me, I've probably owned it if it can go in an aquarium. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, we'll do the cats and dogs and cats. Dogs and cats. So the thing about the cats is, I always wanted a fucking cat. Yeah. Uh, my mom is not a fan of cats. No, not so at we all. <laughs> could never get one. And then just, I don't know, five, six years ago, probably, mm-hmm. um, we live out in the country, in the hill country, not deep, deep in the country, but there's a lot of like a field mice and a lot of critters outside. Yeah. And my mom really didn't like that. Well, sometimes in the front, we would find like tarantulas or, or you'd see mice out in the front yard. And, uh, she didn't like that. So I told her, I convinced her one time, I went and took her to my bar and got her drunk. And my, my ex-girlfriend and I convinced her that it would be the best way to get rid of anything and make sure no pest comes out is to get a cat. Yeah. And it was literally the next day we were out drinking for my mom's birthday. The next day was her birthday and we went straight to the Humane Society, Humane Society and picked out a cat. <laughs> That's how we convinced her. That's how we got Cabo. That's how we got Cabo Wabo. Oh my God. So Cabo was part... Mancoon? No. We think? No. no. Oh, well, I don't know if I can say Mancoon because none of the hair or features looked like it. It was just his size. It was his size, but he had like the little M too. That That's in like... Oh, is that in like a lot of half, cats? Half the breeds. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But 
Anyways. He was a very large dog. Cabo was huge. Yes. Which, that's actually the next cat I get. I really want a Maine Coon. Like, yes. have you seen Pet Cemetery? The big, long hair. They look like they're half lynxes. Gorgeous cats. Beautiful. Hit 15, 20 pounds on the reg. That's the next cat I'm going to get. Right now, we have a, a little Siamese mix, mm -hmm. which... We convinced my mom to get another cat. Yep. Um, she's half Siamese. She's really cute. Bombay. Oh my God, she's amazing. Her and Mavos are our best friends too. They love playing they play together. They play and wrestle. You'll see them in the background in some of the episodes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in our last episode, they are literally wrestling like yeah. crazy. So I love cats. I love how different they are. Yeah. Um, my my fun thing that I did for both of them was my room. Do you remember what I did in my room? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I had this idea of like tricking out my room and making it really cool for the cat. So what I did was I, I put a whole bunch of floating shelves on my wall that I didn't use and I put carpet on it. So there was like different levels, like a video game that the cat would run up the wall and jump and go across. Yeah. And it was really cool because you'd come in the room and look up and it looks like a bookshelf, but way by the ceiling and the cat's just up there I'm like the fuck is he doing up there like that's his cat stairs that's his cat stairs yeah. now another really awesome thing that i love about our cats i think because they may a uh, cabo more than bombay um but cabo would hang out with the dogs yes a lot and so he acted like a dog mm -hmm. he played fetch he'd play fetch he'd come when you call him yep he'd yeah. come when you called him oh my god he was awesome bombay on the other hand is more of a cat cat she yeah. climbs on everything. She only comes scratches, when she wants. Yeah. Only comes when she wants. And Speaking of which, warning, warning, warning. Do not ever, which I learned the hard way, try to put your cat on a Roomba if you don't know what it's going to do. I've seen all those videos online, and it looks so fucking funny and hilarious to see a cat roll around on a fucking Roomba, the robotic wireless vacuums. vacuums. Yeah. And we have a few of them in the house, so I was like, oh, this would be fucking hilarious. So I picked her up and just started walking to it and got maybe a few feet, and she saw it and turned and clawed the shit out of me. So this I was, was furious. I was so fucking mad. This was like right after surgery, or right after you got home from the hospital, mm -hmm. too, and Bombay scratched the shit out of him. And yeah. I was like, go sanitize it. You can't get sick. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Big risk, yeah. Huge risk, but it healed. Bombay was fine. No harming of the cat done in this. That bitch. <laughs> I was so mad at her. I was like, how could you betray me like that? Bombay loves me. I think it's just you. She doesn't like Kahlua either. <laughs> no. Well, Kahlua kind of turned on Bombay one day. Kahlua gets a real hyper against, I would say, small, little, darty animals. Uh, she's just, it's in her. Yeah. Uzo, no, I get that. 170, 160 pound, big teddy bear. He doesn't give a fuck. He can't give the a fuck. Bombay goes up to him. Bombay goes to Scotch and to Mimosa. Yeah. It's it's you, Kalua. <laughs> Kalua and Mimosa, I've seen them play a few times, but it's a little hard for Mimosa to keep up. She's uh, she's just a big dog, so yeah. when she plays, she plays She rough. plays hard. That's what, when her and Uso play, that's two really big, big dogs. Yeah. Really going at it. And I mean... They play hard. Oh my god, I know. So uh, on the next episode, we're probably going to finish it off for pets, part one. Pets, part two, macaws, birds, sugar gliders, aquariums is the one you're going to have to check out. Aquarius. I have a lot of videos of my pet octopus, eels, and sharks, and uh, just a lot of exotic fish. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the fish that like you see scuba diving and stuff like that. It's 100%. really, really awesome that we've gotten to like see those in our house. So yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed our dogs and cats episode. Yep. <laughs> I hope you liked some of our little furry animal stories. But yeah, that's it for episode seven. We hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys um, watch the video because you get to see some of our animals in mm -hmm. the video. Follow us on social media at effing priceless for everything. We'll be posting some pictures of them um, for Mimosa's birthday. She was up on there, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you guys watch on YouTube, listen on iTunes, and subscribe. Thank you guys so, so much again. And thank you to our bands. Yeah, our intro music is uh, Saltwater Slide. Some uh, local guys that do like a reggae vibe. They are uh, really good guys. Very um, environmentally conscious. They do like beach cleanups uh, yeah. in the valley and on the coast. 
Um, they're always a good time when I listen to them. Always puts me in a good mood. Definitely check them out on uh, Pandora, Spotify, and YouTube. Yeah, they're great. And then our outro music is Love Killed the Hero with lead singer Wally Rovelas. Wally. Check out their video for So Damn Nice. It's their NPR Tiny Death Submission video. So make sure to go like and check that out as well. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hope to see you guys for episode eight next Tuesday. See you guys. It's getting late. My body's tired. That's all right. Too